Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism, narcissistic abuse, narcissistic relationships, and all kinds of stuff that's relevant to understanding these difficult relationships. It's my hope that this content will help you cope, heal, understand these relationships, just so you can make sense of a difficult situation or maybe help someone else out who is in one. Now it's the month of May, which is Mental Health Awareness Month, and as a result we're featuring some videos on a range of mental health conditions to provide some basic education. These are not meant to be exhaustive by any way, in any way, and also to tie these mental health issues to both narcissistic abuse and narcissism. Narcissistic abuse and narcissism often tend to be embedded in other patterns or related to other patterns. And it's my hope this month to show you some of those linkages. Today we're going to be talking about a disorder called histrionic personality disorder. So histrionic personality disorder is, is, a, is a personality disorder that's actually about to probably be retired as they're making decisions in the DSM about which personality disorders are going to keep. This one looks like it's going to get the ax. It's a rather unfortunately named disorder. The disorder is basically a pathologization of a woman's body. Hist histrionic comes from hysteria, which comes from wandering uterus and you know the rest of that story. So it's a problematic word, but it's the word we've got because it's the word they use and I'm very aware that it's a problematic word. So Let's talk a little bit about what this thing called histrionic personality disorder is. In a word, this is a disorder that's very much characterized by shallowness. It's a person who's excessively and exaggeratedly emotional, constantly attention seeking. And these are these the patterns we say here are things like a person who's very uncomfortable when they're not the center of attention. Their interactions with other people are often characterized by being seductive or inappropriately sexual. Very, very, very flirtatious. It feels like boundary violating flirtatious. Their emotions are very rapidly shifting. They use their physical appearance to draw attention to themselves. They will enhance themselves. They'll be very dressed. They'll often dress quite provocatively in a way that would attract attention or outlandishly. Their, their speech is very, um, it's very impressionistic. And that's a, the, what that really means when we say something is impressionistic. What we mean is that it's a very, uh, how do I put it? Like it would be someone like saying, I met someone and we had the most magical connection and I feel this magic energy between us. I'm like, what, what does that mean? So there's no there there when these folks are talking very does it lacks details they talk in these sort of big broad strokes but you you want to say to them what exactly do you mean this is a very self dramatizing kind of a personality style very theatrical very exaggerated i guess like i'm doing now lots of gesturing you know the very again theatrical is really the best word very suggestible it's very easy for them to be influenced by other people. And in this way, they can actually fall for all kinds of can, uh, cons and scams and even conspiracies of all kinds. Like they can easily be influenced and they can be easily tricked. And as a result, sometimes may spend money on things that are, um, they're being told this is a magical cure for something and like sign me up. Or if you take this class, you'll learn everything on all the secrets for the rest of life. Sure, sign me up. And so they're very vulnerable to those kinds of mechanisms. And they actually consider relationships to be closer than they actually are. So they'll meet someone once and think, this is my best friend. Or they'll tell you after meeting you once, I love you. And you'll say, wow, okay. And so there's a, there's a real assumption of intimacy and closeness, which obviously can't be the case when you've known someone a short time. And it really speaks to the deficits we see in intimacy in people with a histrionic personality style. Folks like this are very inappropriate. And it's interesting because this is a pattern that has been called by some researchers as what we call egocentonic. People who, are, who have this histrionic personality style actually don't have much insight into the idea that these patterns are a problem. And they're actually a little bit surprised when other people are bothered by them or their relationships start going south. And the prevalence of this is about 2 to 3%, just like we see across most of the personality disorders. 
Now this time I'm going to go in the other direction and talk about how narcissism links to histrionic personality style because it'll help us talk about narcissistic abuse a little bit more clearly. I have always believed that histrionic personality and is really sort of narcissism light. It's a reason I think it actually probably does need to be retired because I think a lot of these patterns might almost be sort of the mildest levels of narcissistic personality styles. They're very, very close in presentation. Now, obviously, much more in line with a grandiose narcissistic style. Think about it. The histrionic style has amongst its diagnostic criteria things like being attention-seeking, not and, and feeling uncomfortable when they're not the center of attention, being seductive, have shall, having shallow emotions, being overly focused on their appearance, talking in the sort of shallow way where they're not really saying anything, um, being grandiose, being overly concerned about other people, having poor boundaries. This definitely feels like narcissism light. And there's another pattern we tend to see in people who are histrionic. They tend to be psychologically immature for their entire life, not just as like young adults. Like they'll be 70 and still have this very, very childish, immature presentation, youthful in, in ways that sort of seem like that ship has kind of sailed. And so again, it's a real kind of a psychological immaturity that we see in them, a, a stuntedness of sorts, which can be fine on a happy summer's afternoon, but in the day-to-day, -day, it's really unsustainable. And like I said, this is a diagnostic uh, group, a diagnostic style, I should say, this personality disorder that's probably going to get booted from the DSM, but it really is. A lot of this gets absorbed by the narcissistic style and might be more of a stylistic issue, this sort of attention-seeking, shallow style, more than a disorder per se. When people with histrionic personality sort of find themselves having more of the disorder issues where it's causing impairment or it's causing distress, it's because it's usually blowing up their relationships and they're going from relationship to relationship and people are leaving them because they find this to be a very immature kind of a relationship style. Now, when we shift gears to narcissistic abuse, given how much of an overlap there is, between histrionic personality and narcissism. You can see that somebody's gonna have, it's gonna have similar impacts on someone in a relationship with them. Maybe not as severe, because as I said, histrionic personality almost feels like narcissism light. So let's start with if this is your parent. You have a parent who has more of a histrionic presentation. Many times people will then feel like they are becoming the parent to this person, even as a child. Because like, let's say it's, you have a mom like this. It's always the mom show. It's always the dad show, the drama, their passions, their stuff. And you're always feeling like you're always having to indulge this really immature parent. A child with a parent like this can feel sometimes even ashamed and embarrassed around their parents' attention-seeking behavior, their immaturity, their inappropriateness, or even their flirtatiousness or their seductiveness. It can be really sort of, again, shame-inducing for someone. And because these are parents who often don't have deep empathy or, or have the capacity to make a deep connection, they can really be emotionally unavailable parents. But then these are parents all these barely big, strong of emotions like, hey, everyone, let's turn the house into a circus today. And so it'll feel fun, like, Whoa, okay, we'll have a circus. But at the same time, you're thinking, but tomorrow's a school day and I still need to get my homework done. So there's this, always this push-pull of you live in this fun, fun place. But a child can sort of start feeling panicky if there's really no adult kind of keeping the trains running on time. And so a child may feel that they need to parent their immature parent and say, Mom, it's coming to dinner time. It'll be 10 o'clock and they'll still be setting up the darn circus. So for those of you who grew up like this, you know it. And while it's, it may not ha have the same you're not enoughness that we see in narcissistic abuse, it's still the sense of confusion, uh, still a sense of um, sometimes shame, and still a sense of what is going on here, like a sense of self-doubt, because a child is really having to step in and sort of parent their parent. In a close, intimate relationship, the histrionic personality symptoms can result in a greater likelihood of patterns we also see in narcissistically abusive relationships, like infidelity or really, really uncomfortable, embarrassing lack of boundaries on, the, on behalf of, an, of a histrionic partner. 
a person once again may feel like they're in a relationship with sort of a, a an adolescent even though it's an adult relationship and because we know that in some cases you can have a lot of this sort of shallow immature theatrical emotional histrionic stuff alongside traditional narcissism and if you have both of those things happening at the same time it actually does feel like really toxic narcissistic abuse and incredibly frustrating it's actually not unusual for a person with histrionic personality disorder or histrionic patterns to end up in relationships with narcissistic people. The grandiose zazazu and pizzazz of a narcissistic person is actually quite appealing to a person who has a histrionic personality style. And when that sort of grandiose, arrogant, controlling, unempathic narcissism meets up the superficial emotionality, but the equal incapacity for intimacy we see in a histrionic person, it's sort of interesting, especially in the love bombing phase. We can see a lot of talk of twin flames and magical relationships and magical connections and this is a you know this is something that's transcendent and no one's ever experienced this before it's like you've got two people in this sort of shared strange space with each other but as is often the case in any narcissistic relationship at some point the narcissistic person will probably lose patience with the histrionic style person and then these end up becoming very very volatile relationships where the history where for example a narcissistic pa a partner will become very jealous of a histrionic partner going being out there uh, drawing attention to themselves and flirting so you can see where this goes isn't it's, it's very very explosive in terms of treatment like most personality patterns and personality disorders, histrionic personality can be pretty treatment resistant, mostly because of the lack of insight. Because unless something else goes wrong in the life of somebody with a histrionic personality, they are not likely to come in for therapy and they're not likely to turn this style off. They think there's nothing wrong and they actually think everyone else is like, oh, you're such a, you're such a big old, you know, wet blanket. You're not fun. And, you know, gosh, why do you have to be so stodgy in this? So you always feel like you have to be the grown up when you're around this person. It's interesting when you see people with histrionic personalities and they get into later life, like 70s and 80s. They remain sort of childlike and shallow and attention seeking all the way through. There's a still that sort of strange theatrical quality to them. And, and it's the, but it's interesting that theatrical part is more ridiculous, but it's not the part that's disruptive in this relation, in this, um, personality style. It's the shallowness of their emotions and their inability to connect with other people with any kind with other people with any kind of depth. That's what causes problems for them. So as a result, people with histrionic personalities may go into later life. Not, sometimes will continue to date pretty vigorously into their older age, but it's hard because they may not have consistent relationships, consistent caregivers, and you may find if you're the adult child of a histrionic a histrionic parent or a parent with a histrionic personality style, you feel very frustrated that you feel like you're babysitting a teenager, but in fact, this teenager is 85 years old. But treatment, mm, not so much. I mean, again, if they start experiencing some other mental health issue, they may go in for that, but it's hard work for the therapist who's still often having to bat up against this more histrionic personality style. And for more information about histrionic personality disorder or histrionic personality, please go to the video notes and we have some resources for you there. So I hope this video is helpful and clarified some of those connections and what the histrionic personality style and personality disorder are about. Thank you.